Hello and welcome. Today we'll be making oatmeal raisin cookies. I had defrosted one stick of butter because I mis, um, misread the recipe. It calls for three-fourths cup of butter and I was thinking in my head three-fourths of a stick which is not exactly how that works. So I had to take a mostly frozen stick of butter and uh, try to slice it up into tiny little pats in order to get it to mix better since it was kind of hard. Um, so the first thing you'll do is cream your butter and sugar and it's three-fourths cup of butter. I am using margarine here because it's cheaper and better for your cholesterol and um, the sugar is coming shortly. Ever since I learned that I have a glucose problem, I have been using sucralose as a sugar substitute in my baking, and it is definitely not as flavorful as sugar. It, I find that if you use sucralose or Splenda, Splenda regular, Splenda also makes like um, stevia products now, but the traditional Splenda, if you use just that, your baked goods kind of taste like earwax, or at least they did to me the first time I used it. So what I do now is um, I cut it with a tiny bit of sugar. Um, I've lately started using a third or a fourth the real sugar required in my recipes. So this is going to be three-fourths cups of light brown sugar, which I will be making myself using molasses. Um, I don't measure the molasses, but I think it's a couple of tablespoons is what I ended up using here. So um, three-fourths cup of brown sugar or two-fourths cup of, of sucralose and one-fourth cup of regular sugar mixed together with molasses to make brown sugar. I started off using the spoon, but one thing I've learned um, with making brown sugar substitutes uh, is that it's a lot easier to just use your hands. So I usually try to keep one hand clean when I'm using my hands to get dirty and cooking and one hand messy. And the reason I like to keep one clean is in case I need to answer the phone or something like that. So here I am mixing the sugar substitute with the molasses by hand. The reason I like doing it this way as well is because um, I think that you can squeeze the molasses into the sugar crystals easier than using a spoon and you use less molasses to get the same essential consistency of uh, brown sugar. If you don't make your own brown sugar, I do highly recommend it. I never have to uh, anymore like worry about whether my brown sugar is getting too hard or put that terracotta bear in the, in the container with it or like charge the bear, I guess, with water. I don't know how that works. But I don't have to do that anymore because I make it from scratch now. And molasses, despite the fact that there's a lot of sugar in it, uh, molasses and honey are better for your glucose than refined sugar. So um, even though there's sugar in the molasses for, you know, the brown sugar substitute, it's still healthier than a package of brown sugar for someone with type 2 diabetes or a high A1C. And this is the perfect consistency of brown sugar. It kind of is the color of a new penny. Um, the recipe called for light brown sugar if you're buying something directly from the store and it's already made but dark brown sugar doesn't make that much difference it just makes them a little bit softer I believe so it honestly doesn't matter if a recipe calls for whatever kind of brown sugar I just use what I have whether it's dark or light whatever's in the house typically works for any recipe and then I'm gonna be adding the white sugar 
the white sugar is one full cup and I am doing a quarter cup of real sugar and then three-fourths cup of sucralose to keep the sweetness but lower the I don't even know what it is the, sh the real sugar the refined sugar the stuff that makes my glucose spike or my insulin spike You may have seen this plastic lid in my thumbprint cookies recipe and if you haven't watched that definitely check it out it's a very versatile recipe that um, can let you use many different jam flavors or filling flavors in the recipe the plastic lid was something my husband made for his mixer way back before I met him and it really does keep everything pretty clean so you're gonna want to cream your butter and sugar which just means mixing it on a medium or high speed until it's um, very well mixed. This recipe calls for just one egg and I did decide to use an egg instead of my egg substitute of cornstarch and water because my husband was complaining that we had too many eggs. Uh, one thing I will always do um, based on my mom's advice is to crack an egg into a bowl before putting it into your batter. Um, in the 80s when she was making brownies or cookies for school for me once there was a, a rotten egg that would have gone to the batter if she hadn't been practicing this already. So uh, I'm like the only person on YouTube who cracks their eggs in a separate bowl ahead of time before putting it in the batter. I, I will not risk my batter with messed up eggs. And then you're going to be putting in one tablespoon of vanilla extract. I didn't have quite enough left over in my first bottle and so I used another bottle that I bought recently um, to f finish filling it up but if you don't have quite enough it doesn't matter that much it's not like you taste vanilla when you're eating cookie so whatever quantity you have is probably fine <laughs> Then add two teaspoons of kosher salt. If you're using, I think it's called iodized salt or table salt or whatever it is with the smaller crystals, then just cut that down to one teaspoon. Otherwise, it will be way too salty. One teaspoon of cinnamon. This is a very important ingredient, I think, for this recipe. Once I made this and I forgot the cinnamon, and it just was not quite as good. So uh, definitely add the cinnamon. If you don't have cinnamon, I think nutmeg can sometimes be a substitute for that. And then half a teaspoon of baking soda. Stir that until there's no more lumps left. Very smooth is how you want it.
before you add the oats, check the batter. It should be pretty good cookie consistency. Wet, but not too wet. Next, you're going to fold in two cups of rolled oats. These are sometimes called old-fashioned oats or steel-cut oats. Whatever you do, do not buy the instant oatmeal or anything that says instant on it because this will not work with that kind of oat. You can see I almost ran out of oats here. So that is gonna go back on my shopping list. Oats are one of the things I buy all the time, uh, mostly because I make this recipe constantly. Uh, also because sometimes I put it in a blender or food processor and turn it into oat flour. And in fact, see the fold, folded just means slowly, like gently mix it together. So that's the oats once they're mixed for like a short time. You're gonna add one and a quarter cup of flour. You can use oat flour as a substitute. Um, they will affect the cookie's consistency. Anything with gluten in it has a bit of a chewier, stretchier situation going on. Um, and then gluten-free, which oat is gluten-free, it's also better for your, um, diet, your, your glucose as well. Um, anything like that is going to not stretch as much, but it will still retain its shape. It's just that it'll probably crumble on you when you try to eat it. So one and a quarter cup of flour and then one and a quarter cup of raisins. Uh, one cup is fine if you don't have quite that many. I always um, substitute every now and then when I get the chance craisins, dried cherries, chocolate chips. Pretty much any kind of dried fruit. I bet blueberries would be very good. Anything that goes with oatmeal. Bananas, uh, would that work? I don't know, banana chips? <laughs> Anything that you think you could top oatmeal with, um, you can totally put in the cookies here and it will taste great. Then you mix everything um, pretty quickly once it forms, um, or once it kind of amalgamates, that's not the right word, but once it kind of blends together, you can stop the mixer. So here's the consistency of the dough. It's pretty thick. It's still wet enough, um, not dry like when I used the egg substitute that was aquafaba. And it is pretty much ready. So the only thing you have to do differently with oatmeal cookies, especially steel cut oats, old fashioned oats, is you do have to let them sit and absorb the butter. Um, if you don't let your oats absorb the liquid in the batter long enough they will be hard and crunchy and not that great um, so I let mine rest for an hour here I have done this recipe in the past where I let it rest for 25 minutes and that seemed okay I think that was the shortest I let it rest where it still kind of turned out not crunchy but it, unless you like crunchy cookies and if you're doing this recipe with full sugar and everything these will spread like a mofo uh, on the pan they will be thin and crispy so um, be aware of that so one thing you have to do with uh, fake sugar is smash the cookies down with your palm once they're on the sheet pan that's because um, as you might have picked up earlier 
the full sugar cookies, uh, sugar kind of melts in the oven and spreads the batter really well. And that doesn't happen with the fake sugar like um, Splenda. So you, unless you want like a, a, a cookie that looks exactly like cooked dough that never moved, like you threw some dough on the pan and then you just cooked it in that position, like you froze it. If you want it to look like that, it'll be really kind of tall and round, you can do that. If you want it to look like a cookie and you're using a sugar substitute, flatten them down and you'll have a better tasting cookie. If you picked up on the Futurama soundbite that was my husband's text message in the previous recording, give a thumbs up in the comments. I did not want to have to record that whole thing over again. When I talk, I tend to do run-on sentences, especially if I get excited or am uh, animated about something, and I thought, oh no, I'm not recording that again just to get rid of, of Far Professor Farnsworth. So uh, sh give me some, some love if you like the Futurama. So after the hour has passed, you're going to want to preheat your oven to 350 and then bake these for 12 to 15 minutes. Um, anytime there's a range like that on a recipe, I kind of go halfway. And here is what the cookies looked like after they were finished baking. They were pretty brown, um, definitely not burned, and they spread very slightly. As you can see, they kind of look the same. Using a wire rack to let your cookies cool is very helpful in that um, you just get them cool faster. If you don't have one of these, just put them on a towel. Uh, I used to use a paper towel back before I realized how wasteful that was. Um, but you can use a regular old cloth towel and there won't be any problem. So the cookies, as you can see, they're not spreading a lot. The dough doesn't spread when you crack it um, or when you split the cookie. And that is because I didn't use very much real sugar, but they are still definitely sweet enough. Um, they are very soft. I will say that they, uh, they cooked very well. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more recipes, feel free to subscribe and I will see you later. Thank you.